my English hasn't improved that much from the videos. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to, to share some interesting stuff and you guys can take away some cool stuff, hopefully. But uh, yeah, thank you for coming, thank you for having me. We thought it'd be a great opportunity to get Steph in to, to talk about some of the, the more philosophical elements of parkour, the more kind of essential elements of it maybe. He's got a, a, an interesting perspective on it because he's been in the discipline for so long. But the first question I want to ask Dave is somewhere we were discussing last night. You said, um, we're here to live, we're not here to jump. Um, and so yeah, I just thought I'd, the first question would be, what do you mean by that? You guys have been moving a lot today and maybe speaking up a little bit more about what interested me in the first place and what brought me into parkour in the first place, which was um, the, the, the philosophy of parkour, what is it? Why am I training that hard? Why am I taking all those risks? And uh, it was all about um, basically improving myself and improving my life uh, as a whole. So um, we are not here to jump, we're here to live, hopefully a good and meaningful life. And that always has been the, 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 the primary, uh, primary motivation to me. Um, improve myself, self-growth, self-development, and just having a better life. Um, and I think that was the case for a lot of the fund, funding members of Parkour. Like, we haven't seen the end, you know, thank you. <laughs> but uh, at the end, I, I, I say something about, um, is Parkour making you happy? And uh, again, for me, that's, that's still relevant today after 25 years of practicing. And that still should be the, the primary, you know, motivation or reason for you to train that out or to engage into actually any activity you do. Is this making you better? So yeah, um, pretty much the same kind of philosophy I had back in the days when I studied parkour um, hasn't changed at all, it's the same. Do you think you got that philosophy from parkour? Was that innate in you already and that's why you liked parkour? Or? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, which one came first? Uh, uh, now with time, and I could be wrong, who knows what I'll say in 10 years from now, but I think I was wired and designed this way to just, just always uh, search for for happiness and, and, and a better version of myself and, and improve, improving my life. And then parkour just happened to be there at the right time and offer a lot of, of, of tools for me to, to develop those, those ability to, to be better and, and then living a better life. Uh, and can you explain how it did that? Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you have to plant seeds and walk on and then you, you, don't, you don't necessarily see it or touch it, it's not physically here. But in parkour, you're here, your goal is just there, you can see it, you can touch it, and, and you're one person here, and when you reach your goal and you over, overcome your fear and you, you've gone through all that process, when you reach the goal, you're, you're, you're instantly rewarded and, and feel like a better person. So maybe I needed that direct uh, experience and reward. And you've been there in parkour almost from the start, I mean, very early on, uh, training with David and the Yamakasi and those guys. Um, and you've taken it all the way through to it being your profession, running international companies, doing it, teaching around the world. You know, you, and you've seen all the innovations that have come, all the iterations of it, comp competitions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, what's your when you look back at the, at the, the 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 history of parkour and kind of how it's changed or not changed, or what's changed or what hasn't changed? What's your, what's your overall view, what's your overall feeling of that, that whole process? Well, what's changed is mostly, I guess, that now it exists, it, it's a thing, parkour. It has a name, it has a gym, it has names for techniques, it has methods of training, it has a crowd, a community. Uh, so yeah, it's established now. And before, it wasn't. If for you the most important is to grow and search and and explore stuff that hasn't been done, then there's a part of that that's gone because now parkour is established and have a lot of answers already. And the, the answers have been answered because the, 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 the research and questioning process has been done when it wasn't anything. So I guess, yeah, I guess a part of that is, is gone. And if you're really interested into looking into, into yourself and, and those deep questions, then I guess you probably have to find something else, right? Something that hasn't been done, right? And do your own kind of parkour and create your, your, 
new movement or whatever. Uh, and can you do that in pop order? Because if you're starting, say someone taking it up now, they haven't done that process. Yeah. So the the the, tr the path has been blazed, the trail has been walked. Yeah. But they so have part of it, it so. is gone. But yeah, yeah, there's still a lot to learn, of course. Uh, and again, it depends on on how much you're you're looking <coughs> for at, at a certain time and when you discover parkour. But of course, yeah, you because when you discover parkour, you still discover parkour, even though now it's established and you guys are here to give to provide guidance and, and safe methods of training. You're still discovering it. So on the on, on, in, during this process, you'll obviously learn a lot about parkour, but a lot about yourself. Uh, some of the stuff that, that I've spoken to Steph about over the years that I think is very interesting, that is discussed much less, um, is what I want you to go into now, a bit, if you don't mind, which is the, um, the idea that um, having a path or, or a way, a, a transformative practice, it could be movement practice, it could be anything, but parkour is one of them. Having one of those is obviously great, but if it gets to the stage where your identity is so attached to that thing that you can't abandon it, you can't let it go, and it becomes your identity, then it can become, an, it can become a bad path to follow, to stay with. Sometimes staying on a path like that can be negative for you, and this is obviously how people stay in very bad psychological ruts or, um, um, or, or become very protective about a certain point of view, right? So sometimes the Sometimes to honor a path, a true transformative practice, you have to step away from the path, right? So, and this is also the philosophy of parkour. This is still parkour. Doing that is parkour. Yeah. What do you, what do you, how would you unpack that? And why, why is that the case? I think it's interesting to always question yourself and, and think about, is this path still, you know, the good one? And, and is it not preventing me to discover other paths path or, or challenges? that I actually need more than doing parkour. If, if my priority now is there and taking care of that aspect of my life, then why would I spend eight hours a day training parkour? Or even, even eight hours a week? That would be too much if, that's, if, that, if, that, if that doesn't help me to solve that path over there. And I, as you said, I could be stuck because, oh, I invested so much time, parkour is me, it's my identity. If I leave parkour, I'm, I'm, I give up. I'm bad, um, I should be ashamed of myself, I will quit parkour. No, I think you should be brave enough to recognize that parkour it might not be this, the good thing for you and the potentially other, other good stuff that are really, really much better for you right now. So, yeah, I guess it applies more to people who've been doing parkour for you know, a long time. Um, if you're still discovering parkour, you might be like, what is he talking about? I love parkour, you know, that, that's really cool. And which, that's good in that case. But, um, I guess that the, the idea is to always question yourself on your past and and if are you on, on the good path? Are you benefiting benefiting from that practice? And if not, being honest enough and brave enough to just find something else and not being attached to to the work you put in because uh, it doesn't define you. What defines you is your action is being actually able to, to to go away from that path and take another one and grow a step higher and, and higher. And there's fear involved in that. In that, that itself is overcoming fear. Exactly. Yeah. yeah.